for my guest Kweku Bako, Harun Edrisu, uh, Dr. Yangsin, and Martin Pebu. And let me read some of your messages to you. And uh, this one from Masaudu Mohammed uh, Mahe says that the incessant polarization of every single issue in this country is sickening to say the least. The constitution of Ghana allows for press freedom, but the same constitution doesn't allow for press irresponsibility. Fuseni uh, Ta says that we all cry for our state institutions to be empowered to, be, uh, to perform their constitutionally mandated duties, yet we turn around and lambast them if they try to do so. What kind of nation are we building? Stephen Champong in USA says, in Ohio, says that the NCA's action is on point. This will make other radio and TV stations responsible. You can't operate a business and not pay your taxes. Okay, this is not about taxes. Thumbs up, but that's a good example to the NCA. Um, Haruna Eliasu in Tamale says, how can any group of pe pe persons blame government over the non-payment of taxes by, okay, once again, that's clearly out. Let's move on. Um, one here, just one or two that I'm reading from my PC here, says that um, number 19 of the chronology of events as put out by the NCA is very instructive. It says, the company, Radio Gold, submitted a complete renewal application and paid the application fees. The application was, however, not uh, processed due to the case filed by Geba on behalf of the company at the tribunal. Question is, was there any injunction against the NCA that prevented them from processing the complete renewal application of Radio Gold? Question two, did the NCA inform Radio Gold that they were unable to process their application. How was Radio Gold supposed to know that the NCA had decided not to process their complete renewal application? And question three, did the decision of the tribunal extinguish the complete renewal application of Radio Gold, uh, the Radio Gold submitted to the NCA on 12 January 2018? How is Radio Gold in breach of the law? when they currently have a complete renewal application before the NCA. Has the NCA refunded the application fees <laughs> paid by Radio Gold? Granted without admitting that by the tribunal's decision, defaulting stations are to make fresh applications for authorization. Did the NCA inform or notify Radio Gold of this fact? Did they request for a new application? What happened to Article 23? and 296 of the constitution which says they should act it with reasonable uh, whatever and this that was from sami jemfi this is from nana hesse ojri in danceman he says we seem to be entertaining and justifying impunity what happens to the driver who refuses to renew his license what happens to the lawyer not in good standing the penalties in your the panelists in your studios do have cars do they not go and renew their roadworthy uh, why are we using political colors to cover wrongs and we are the first to quote barack obama let institutions work let's call a spade a spade and not a big spoon institutions must crack the whip thank you that's from nana hesse ojuri and I'll read one more from here. Uh, also, because it's coming from someone who should have information on these developments. That is uh, Kofi Ofosu, uh, Kofi Ofosu of the NPP, and he's the, he's the head of the digital, Accra Digital Center, right? He says, uh, Genesis Media in Gorso, for instance, is considered pro-NPP, but has been shut per the court ruling. In Takrade, two stations, Radio Silver and Beach FM, have been shut down. Beach FM is perceived to be pro-MPP, while Radio Silver is considered NDC. Granted, most of the stations shut down now uh, may be considered pro-NDC. However, the NCA cannot, regu cannot regulate based on politics. Precisely, these stations 
are the ones who will not settle their identified violations and instead resort to litigation. Okay, so a uh, couple of things that he's also pointing to. Now let's go to Ufosan Pofo, shall we? Okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so uh, Samuel Ufosan Pofo, the NDC national chairman, uh, appears to be in trouble a second so, time. The first time it was over the leak tape. And then this time, the police say in their investigations of the kidnappings and arson that we have witnessed in the country recently, uh, someone, one suspect has mentioned Ufosuan Pofo as, you know, being one of those uh, behind a grand scheme to continue perpetrating these uh, acts of crime. They sent him an invitation to come and his lawyers wrote back and said he won't come. Simple. Uh, the police say they will use every means to go get him. I wonder if this was an ordinary citizen. <laughs> They'll be replying and telling everybody to <laughs> use every means. They won't even invite him in the first place. They'll just go and catch him. All right. So um, let's start with that. Haruna. And the party's elders <laughs> issued a statement backing Ufosu Ampofu not attending and his lawyers to issue the statement and going even further to say that the NDC will not cooperate with the police going forward. Yes. Uh national chairman of the lead opposition party, Samuel Ofosu Ampofo, mm. is a very self-respecting person. And those of you, or those of us who have worked with him and know him, a very humble personality. And Samson, the NDC is taking those charges very, very seriously. Note that in the absence of a flag bearer, our national chairman is a leader of the party. And therefore, before you have a party flag bearer, he is the leader of the main opposition party with support base of uh, close to 5 million uh, Ghanaians. The latest invitation, in our view, as was stated by Alajima Maidrisu, is a clear case of political persecution and intimidation and harassment using the police. And my worry, my worry, is that this country should prepare for a politicized police service and bear the dire consequence of it going into the future. None but for the police service is key to the peace and stability of our country and to the enforcement of the rule of law. We solidly believe that it's an attempt to instill fear in the chairman and for that matter supporters of the party. And Samson, let me make this clear. Once you are targeting the national chairman of the party, you are engaged in political stereotyping and stigmatization of the National Democratic Congress as the party responsible for kidnapping in Ghana. That is why we take strong exception to it. If our national chairman and against the CID director general, who herself a month ago in a press conference told the whole world that they knew where the kidnappers <coughs> were. At that time, it was not over so before. Now, matter of leak tapes, even the CID boss, there is a leak tape in the matter of uh, the musician. Has that been investigated? A plus. A plus. The question no, but is, I'm not driving away tape, from it. The contents containing something of criminal import. Did she do anything in that tape that suggested there was a crime to be investigated? Was there, was there crime in it or not? That is the evaluation. No, I'm asking you go to your Criminal uh, Offenses Act and uh -huh. you know that there is. I'm just raising questions. Mm -hmm. You see, rule of law is fundamental principle after natural justice. The key component is equality of the law. Mm -hmm. Now, Honorable Samuel Ofosuan Pofo, he's been Minister of State, he's been Member of Parliament, he's already in court, and you are a lawyer. If you have any other thing, He's already standing trial. Mm. You had yourself dropped kidnapping charges for lack or want of evidence. Why go back to it? And then so we know, that is the summary I've given you. The intention is that let us put it out so that the world and the people of Ghana will blame the NDC for arsons and kidnapping. Even we before you got to know, even, to even before you got to know who this suspect is, and, and the blood, full content of what this suspect has said, this is what you are saying. Of, no, 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 I'm saying, even what? 
before you got to know who this suspect is and the content of what this suspect has so said, you are just going to the conclusions. Know. Good. So who are the suspects? Who are the complainants? We need to know. They take advantage and get to Good. know. Good. No, no. They didn't share it. Indeed, in the letter that was written to Ofosu, in a police which is accountable, <coughs> they should have said that Mr. A is alleging you when they come. Did they state that? No. In the letter, they wrote. They said a suspect. They, no, no. So don't say suspect. In this manner, give him the opportunity to confront those who are alleging. Is that not what they And doing? then I say... Is that not what they have done? Samson. No. They just wrote suspect. It's not enough. In the letter, mm. state. Yeah, Let me know my accusers. Ah, is that not... So you go there and you say, who no, is the accuser? No. Can I say and the And I'm accuser? saying that, no, he is law-abiding. Mm. And mm. we are saying that in this manner... There will be no cooperation if we want. What is the intention of an investigation? Ultimately, to end in court. We are already in court. You want to amend your charge sheet? Do so. You want to add up? Do so. Within the law, he's already on bail by a court order. So this is not a person who is refusing to stand trial or to cooperate with investigation. Can you imagine our national chairman spending five, ten hours at police headquarters? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to solidarize with him. It means none of us will work. Mm -hmm. So who will keep the government in check? Mm. It means that you are weakening the political opposition deliberately. Mm. And we take strong exception to it. We have asked uh, 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 loving members of the NDC to be awake. We will resist. We will resist. We will respect the laws of Ghana, but let it be applicable to all other persons. Even in this administration, we've seen persons with tapes mm -hmm. bordering on crime. <laughs> I don't want to refer mm -hmm. to the uh, bishop who is uh, reported to be a friend to the president. What has happened to him? Where is rule of law? So you see the danger. Don't substitute the rule of law for rule of the rule or rule of the might. Mm -hmm. No. That what, is what is what, happening. What, what has the bishop That's said? That selective application has, of the what law. What has the bishop said? Play the tape. I want you to hear his voice. What has he said? I said play the tape of the bishop. You know it. Play it and see whether in it there is criminality or not, and what has happened to You are to referring him. to Isi Owusu Bempa. What did and you say? And I say, play the tape. I, I, not my voice. Mm. Hear his you voice. You are making the And reference. we can give you many. Mm. In this country, we've seen vigilantes even go and read the court. What happened to them? Where is rule of law? That's why I'm saying that, look, we are very, very capable oh, But that one, the court convicted them. We know, we know. <laughs> even that will come and win the conviction <laughs> against other conviction he is a good lawyer a uh, uh, contempt in fancy courier and mm. contempt ex fancy courier you had one plainly in the face oh, of that it. one uh, even let me show you this example in the u.s give more e examples. evidence shows that uh, when a black man is convicted his sentence is usually higher than uh, a white man <laughs> for the same crime you say it so okay. let's I, not I, once the court so convicted them mm. we are law abiding yeah. but we want to spend our productive time fighting to uh, as an alternative to government mm. not for them to use the police to intimidate and then uh, take our time that productively we can use in keeping government accountable to its field uh, promises so of for our national chairman is law abiding our council of elders have looked at it and we are saying that why do you investigate you want to end up in court if you have anything hold all he's already in court but you don't ask him to come and sit sometimes five hours. You don't even attempt to him. What's the respect to our national chairman? Mm. So the police must be wary. I see. Let's hear. Let's hear what. Let's hear what the former president, former president John Mahama, had to say about this particular invitation. No amount of harassment of our national chairman will save the MPP from defeat. Indeed, it is a sign of desperation. It is a sign of desperation that the chief, it is a sign of desperation that the chief executive of our party, the chairman of our party, is constantly being harassed by the police authorities. But let them remember that they are setting a precedent. Let them remember that in everything they do, they are setting a precedent. You cannot take any frivolous and vexatious investigation and be inviting the national chairman of the biggest opposition party every day to the CID headquarters on very useless allegations. We are advising the NPP. If you deliver on your promises, the people of Ghana will look favorably at you. 
But if you have failed, don't, out of your desperation, decide to harass our party officials. Whatever you do, you cannot escape the judgment of the people. And on 7 December 2020, the people of Ghana are going to decide, no matter what harassment you subject our people to. Right, so, Dr. Yansen, should it be an issue in the first place? A person has a right when invited to the police to, to elect not to go. I, I, I think it's pretty straightforward, as you said, because, you see, the Honorable Minority Leader was talking about rule of law, the fact that there's supposed to be quality of law, natural justice, and all that. What he means is that the state institutions, the police itself, actually takes its authority from the states, should also do things in a way that all of us will be happy about. But that does not mean that when they seek to do certain things in line with what they are legally mandated to do, we'll also use some other force to say that it is persecution and what have you. <laughs> Granted, NDC, for them, this is persecution, stereotyping, harassment of NDC generally, the former president, the allegations are Someone actually insists that he's being defamed and he should consider and his all, options. All, all, all that. It is a right that NDC as a political party has to more or less speak out and what have you. So I don't have any qualms with those bits at all. But then, the state institutions should also be able to do their work. Now, if they are conducting some investigations, I'm not too sure which particular investigations. They have told us. Yes. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, I'm not too sure because they are talking about arson, kidnappings. kidnappings. And in recent times, there have been so many kidnappings. Mm -hmm. There have been some in Kumase, uh, Takrade, Accra, and all that. I don't know which particular one. So if in the process of investigations, they genuinely... This is where my emphasis is. Genuinely, pick up signals that, look, we need to speak to one or two people, whether they are political entities or non-political entities. I think that the police should have the right to invite them and then speak to them as part of their investigation. Mm. That does not mean that if you had another case pending in the courts, then we should just assume that, well, once something is pending, you should not be called. Mm. Because... Is that, is that right for a process to follow? If you have charged... You, okay, they charge him for kidnapping as well, and they drop that charge. Um, once the matter is in court, are they supposed to come back to him and say, we need you to come because... That's what I'm saying. That they, they are investigating different things mm. all over the place. There have been several kidnappings. I'm not too sure which particular one. The tape... The tape that they are looking at, which for which they have put him before court. That I think it's settled. Includes questions of, you know, kidnapping. Yes, but what I'm saying is that post uh -huh. that, there have been some kidnappings around. Mm. And I'm not too sure which particular kidnapping they are referring to. Mm. If it is about the tape, the tape was more or less like conspiracy to commit a crime, what have you. But now they are talking about a crime that has been committed and in the course of Investigation. investigations. I mean, the Honorable Minority Leader was saying the letter to inviting him did not even state who the suspect is. I will beg to differ. I don't think it will be fair to put the name of suspects or informants in the public domain. They can tell them... The letter was not to the public. No, what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. when, they go, when, they go, when they go for the sessions with the police, mm -hmm. the police can actually tell them who and who may have made those allegations. But to give their names out before they even go there, I don't think it would have been prudent to do that. Mm -hmm. But it is just fair that they you can, also they know can, your accusers. Can they put it in there and label the letter confidential? No, but it says suspect. We all know. They, we, can we, they put the name there and label the letter confidential? I, I don't think so. I think that name should be given out in camera. Okay. Not through a letter that could fall into anybody's hands. All right. Okay. In that case, do you think that the police should also have thought that this letter could e equally fall into people's hand and they would defame um, as it were over some of because of that and therefore they may not have needed to state why they they were looking for him 
Well, I don't know how they communicated the letter to him. Mm. But if it was delivered to him in a standard professional manner... It certainly will be. Then I guess that they were protecting his rights. So that's why you could include the names in a no, standard professional No, no, I think that manner. when the interrogation itself is going on, or the question or invitation, mm. the discussions are going on, mm. they can reveal all these things. It's even okay. possible that the suspect briefly. could be present um, yes. for you but, to confront them. But, but do you get the point they are making? that on the question of kidnappings, you, the same person writing the letter, seems to have already told all of us that mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no cause for concern. Mm -hmm. you, let's listen to Mamitiwa Adodankwa, <laughs> uh, the CID boss. Let's listen to her on this matter. We've worked very well and currently, we know where the girls are. We are working hard together with other stakeholders so that these girls are brought back home safely. The assurance to the family is that they should keep on keeping on. The ladies, we know where they are and they are safe. So very soon, they will brought back home and they will go back to their family. Okay, so sorry, but why is everybody this is laughing? A, this is their contribution to managing the trauma of parents affected mm -hmm. by the kidnapping of their girls. Keep on keeping Sorry, on. sorry, it's a serious matter, but mm -hmm. everybody was laughing and it affected me. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't help. <laughs> okay, so there's no laughing. There's no laughing matter. Yeah. So this is the police CID, the head of investigations, mm -hmm. <coughs> criminal investigations, mm -hmm. pronouncing categorically that when it comes to these kidnap, uh, mm -hmm. kidnapped girls, mm -hmm. we have found them. Does that end seeking to implicate somebody? That's the argument they are making. Oh, you see, something. That's why I kept asking that there have been series of kidnappings in this country. The Indian guy in Kumasi, there have been some kids, and what have you. So at this point, this particular, in quote, so called suspect who has named the chairman of the NDC, is it in relation to only the attack rate mm -hmm. That's a good question. Okay. If Assuming without admitting that it's in relation to only the attack rate bit, the family should keep on keeping on. <laughs> Two, we know where they are, they are safe. That still does not mean that the people behind those crimes should not be brought to book. Right. I'm not in any way impugning that the chairman of the NDC is part of that cartel, and mm. I don't want to believe that. But what I'm saying is that if investigations are going on, as far as we are concerned, as lawyers, Crime never dies, technically mm. speaking. It could take 20 years, it could take whatever number of years. If at some point the state or the investigative agencies believe that they have something that for which reason they will need to invite you or even seek an order from court to arrest you or whatever mm. as part of those investigations, they still reserve the right to do that. In respect of this same of case, if, it were, if it were the matter of these girls that have been kidnapped, you know there's someone standing trial? Yes, but a Nigerian. Yes, but we all believe that it is not only one person okay. who was involved. So okay. the fact that one person is standing trial does not mean that we should not look for the others. Okay. Thank so you. already you are saying the others may include officers. No, 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 no. I have stated clearly. I have stated clearly. How unacceptable. No, no, I have so this stated is the clearly that I, I don't believe that he's even connected to that at all. Absolutely. How can you also run to that conclusion? No, no. You are not no, a police. You no, don't have the information no, no, no. the listen, police has. Listen, listen to me. I so that's why the police listen, should stop listen, wasting our listen. time with this I, no, no, uh, no, no, no. investigation. Honorable, listen. What I said that, what, what I said is this. That has happened. You say you know where they are. And I'm saying that I don't believe that he is part. But if investigations point to anybody, that person has to be interrogated by the police. Okay. My conviction is irrelevant mm. <coughs> when it comes to that bit. All right. That Thank is you. all I'm saying. Thank you. Yes. So, so Martin. Yes. Uh, this is one of the areas of your mm -hmm. your areas of comfort, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, what should the police do? They have sent an invitation to him. He says, "I won't come." Has he got a right to say so? And what should the police do? Oh, for the. Invitation, as they've rightly stated, generally speaking, pure law, he's not uh, obliged to come. It's an invitation. So he may decline or accept to attend, you see. But moving beyond that, what you find is that, you know, earlier on I stated that uh, looking at the context, 
because of who he is. You know, when you invite somebody, no mean a person than of so and for as uh, Honorable Haruna stated earlier, they have millions of supporters. So usually it charges the political atmosphere. That's why I really wondered if that was the right way to do it. Perhaps they could have been a lot more tactful, could have done it on the quiet, and then even maybe allow the investigator to go see him, especially in light of the accusation that in the, on the previous visits to the police, they sat sometimes for up to five hours. So I'm expecting that. That sounds to me like detention. Exactly. That is it. You see, so it fits into a certain uh, bias. Already there's a negative bias that, look, this guy, they are just out to, you know, intimidate him. So what, the moment you do this, then it fits into it more. That's why I said, so this one, it looks like the CID should have sat back and mm. uh, looked for a more subtle way, another way of dealing with it. His you lawyers see? say, unless you have a warrant, forget it. He's not coming. What yeah. should happen? Yes. So uh, what will happen? Uh -huh. Very good. You know the CID have said, the police said they've reached out to him quietly. We don't know what it is. The last time Dr. Ayini spoke, he said he's here to receive instructions. So I, I pray they are doing the right thing. So down the quiet, even the investigator may go see him and take the, uh, his statement and all that. You know it's done. Yeah, it's Depending done. Depending on who you are in society. Uh, in the Ameswali matters, mm -hmm. we were told that they had gone to see, you know, uh, the man who had disclose his identity on radio on tv uh -huh. they had gone there visited him to in, to speak very with good. him very among good. other people and this is a bigger man who for example for his chairman of a party and as i said especially we are begging madam ty and the police apparatus these things they should always have as the citizens in mind we you know because we are lay you know people security matters we don't joke with them so as soon as ndc starts making noise Please, it has an effect. Mm. It has an effect on the citizen. People begin to feel insecure and the rest. So please, they should have but, but, that but give in us, mind. But give us a general education briefly about this thing of invitation. And arrest. Because in some, in some quarters within lawyers, mm -hmm. the argument is that the invitation is almost always an arrest in any case. So I'd rather wait to be arrested. What, what is it? Uh, 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 yes, that's why I said in some cases, but not all. So because of that. So you know, the invitation says... Oh, we require you come assist us so that you have the right there's evolution that come off your own volition but i know for arrest you go to the person you inform him he's under arrest then you touch, touch. him you say it yes so you inform him he's under arrest then you touch him and then that is it you take him good and also Won't you tell him why you are he's under yes, arrest. Miranda yes, right. that's so what I said. Miranda. yes so that's why i said you inform him for the crime for which reason Absolutely. so you are suspected or you are suspected of Involvement in so so and so crime and so wish to arrest you and then he's touched. Mm. And but you you are not under any obligation to speak because anything you say may be used against you in yes. the court of law. Perfect. You have a right to a lawyer of your choice. Perfect, perfect. Right? So you if you don't do those things, that's where the law says the arrest may be unlawful, unlawful. and therefore you can what? Yes. You can decline it. You yes. can, as it were, reject yes. the arrest. Yes, you remember the case. Is it Asante versus the Republic? Yes. The mm. one the policeman went. He didn't. Uh, he said the inspector. Uh, requires him to come <laughs> and then Asante said he wouldn't go then the policeman sort of you know take the key mm. and then Asante ended up beating the policeman to pulp mm. uh, you know, <laughs> yes that's the case that it is but, but, but is this I'm something is this something we should be encouraging no, no. people to refuse arrest and refuse no. invitations is no, something no, no, we should be at all at all it will lead to anarchy you know no we need the police you know without them we wouldn't be because they <coughs> keep us uh, give us security and the rest. So but there are police uh, and security officers who abuse the same power. Yes. So then we will deal with the excesses. I know the police uh, uh, apparatus, uh, the police set. I know they deal with those. When you go and report an officer for these things, they've been sacking them. They've been dismissing. They've been reducing them in rank. Look, I have one currently. He was just late for work. He was late, just lateness to, uh, to, to work, to report on duty. He was late. He was dismissed. We are still begging IGP day in, day out. We haven't heard a word. There are a number of them. Except that I think the police are not good at telling their own story. Maybe they need to take the PIPs statistics and publish them over and over, both print and electronic media. Okay. Because it gives the impression that they are just out to, uh, uh, what do you call it, do excesses, mm. out to uh, abuse citizens. No, they discipline their own. Okay. So we would encourage citizens to cooperate with the police. But the police should also be tactful when they see that a certain citizen has, uh, let me say, uh, peculiar circumstances mm. that he's 
a politically exposed person, he has uh, followers. You see it. Because just as we, we say, yes, equality before the law. Yes, we agree. But I know as Honorable Haruna sits here, if parliament is in session, you cannot just, no matter what is done, you cannot just arrest him. There is a procedure. Even if it's not in session, he will tell you, I'm going to the business of parliament uh, or I'm returning from the business of parliament. Uh, perfect. And particularly that he's a leader in the house. Uh, perfect. The police will not try it. Uh, exactly. Yeah, but they need to so, follow the rules as prescribed. Yes. Mm. So we are saying that so you get through there. In okay. view of this, all right. So, so the last question I asked you was, what should the police do now? He says, I won't come. Yeah. What should they, they do? They said they've reached out to him. We mm. don't know the content. So we should give the police some space. They imagine, that, say, imagine that is out of the way. What can they do? I, I don't have sufficient fan, uh, facts to <laughs> answer that. Because I some of the hypotheticals, you would just end up shooting yourself in the foot. Oh, so no. I it's also education for our, our viewers and listeners. So I'm saying, police sends me an invitation. I say, I won't go. Oh, then in that case, please, they should send the investigator to Officer Ampofo. They should go there and take the statement in his office mm -hmm. or wherever he chooses to meet But them. if it happened to an ordinary person like me, they would just come and arrest me. Is that not it? Well, sometimes it happens. That's it's right. all they part of equality. Can they come and arrest me without a warrant? That's bill. the question. I wanted oh, you to educate yes, the people. Yes, under mm -hmm. the law, the, mm -hmm. the warrant is not, it's not always under Section 12. So mm -hmm. from 10 to 12 of right. the criminal uh, and other... Uh, offenses, offenses act. procedure yeah. act mm -hmm. the procedure act from right. 10 mm. when policeman you know even we have citizens arrest yeah so mm -hmm. even citizens if they find you in there no, but what is the condition under which they can do that when it's a citizen he must actually see the offense being they committed be but for the police committed. if there's reasonable suspicion that somebody has uh, committed an offense he doesn't mm -hmm. need a warrant but you can see that increasingly citizens are asking for a warrant so this fits into the call for uh, criminal justice reform. You know, the Supreme Court has made that call in several of the cases. Mm. That let's modernize because, you see, it, it makes it better that at the time the police is coming to arrest, you see, there should be a warrant so that at least there will be some details. Of course, you know that even when they say warrant, there will always be a few exceptions. Mm. So Section 10 mm. uh, of the Act 30. Yeah, read for uh, us. Yes, okay. 10.1 says, a police officer may arrest without warrant a person who a commits an offense in the presence of the police officer b obstructs a police officer in the execution of that public of that police officer's duty c has escaped or attempts to escape from lawful custody all these three don't apply to for example for so go on okay. how can they arrest him without a warrant yeah so there is this one uh, b, the two a police officer may arrest without a warrant a person whom the officer suspects on reasonable grounds of a having committed an offense you say okay yes. and then of being about yes so All ten. Right. so ten what their lawyers are asking for that yeah. they must only come for him under a warrant may not really work yes, yes. but sometimes yeah. as i've said citizens have We've been calling for warrants because right. we want due process for okay. crying out Thank loud. You. We are now middle income. Right. So why Thank is that criminal justice yeah. is being ignored? So, so uh, Kweku, do you see the logic in the what his lawyers are saying and what the NDC is also saying about the fact that because Mamitiwa um, has announced already that we know where the girls are, there's no basis to invite Fusampofu. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's an invitation to the realm of absurdity in order to deflect us from dealing with the substance of the issue. The police statement to Mr. A letter inv invitation mm. to Mr. Ampofo mm. does not allude to the specific case of the three Takradi ladies who have been kidnapped. It doesn't allude to that. Yes, there's kidnapping and assets. Yes. Mm. That's what it says. And the police own record shows that 2017, and I'm starting from 2017 and right. not going back early. Mm. It says 2017, 51 kidnappings took place in Ghana. Kidnappings and uh, abductions. Well, it's kidnapping. 2018 is 56. Mm. 2019, March by March, is 30. These are police official records. It could be any of the things they are talking about could be in there. Mm. So, but the Takradi girls is specific. And that's what Madame Tiwa talked about. How do you bring it into this? How? It, it doesn't make sense to mm. me. And the police, the last, para, the last but one paragraph, we said, uh, as a result of the above information and intelligence, you are kindly requested to report to the undersigned on Thursday, 
9th May 2019 at 2 p.m. to assist in our investigations. You may contact Chief Superintendent of Chief Superintendent of Police, Mr. Bafua Penting Yameke, on telephone number so and so if you require further information or clar clarification. Mm -hmm. So some of the issues being raised here, okay, why the names of suspects and things. If could even have been sought through this means, mm -hmm. that is whether the police will give it to you or not, it's another matter. Mm -hmm. But you had the opportunity, even by the tone of this letter, to seek clarification and further information. All right. In my candid opinion, and I'm not sure, is this a precedent that we are setting? It's obviously not true. We all know that. Right. A lot of invitations have gone to high political profiles over the years, both mm -hmm. NPP and NDC administrations. It started with, uh, two, let's say we go back to just 2001, mm. when the change, the mm. call it really mm. trans first transition took place. We had situations where a lot of NDC uh, functionaries were invited by various security uh, agencies. Indeed, they got, they got so angry with the way they thought they were being treated, you know, that some of even the questionnaire were intrusive and all the rest. Mm. And then the, day, the hours you spend at, I've gone through such processes before. So I believe, I, I feel <laughs> it. When you are invited to police station or BNI and you sit down for hours, yeah. sometimes even you don't get access to your lawyer and all, mm. I, I cannot sit here and say those things are acceptable. Indeed, it's a subculture in our intelligence and security, mm. including the police things when they tend to arrest or investigate things. We should find ways and means of mm. cutting those things out but if, of if the system. The invitations are not generally applicable to all ordinary citizens of the land when they are suspected of having committed a crime <laughs> or they are needed to assist the police as persons of interest. But they are limited to people with sufficient reputation. Why is it that when you invite them to come, if some of goes to the CID, and we are being told by his lawyers, they sit there upwards five hours, six hours. Yeah, it's, 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 to it's completely unacceptable. It's so, so, sometimes it's like subtle psychological torture. So do you see he has a justification for not wanting to attend to the invitation? But as you said, he can refuse the invitation. Mm. There are other options. Exactly. So I'm not going to contest that. I have suggested that I think he should have uh, adhered to the invitation. Okay. You should accept it, go there, and deal with them. So, some of these things we hear, and I'm going to be very cautious. Some of these things are offenses, are allegations, some of them are bizarre, and some of them <laughs> never can be established. Established. Mm -hmm. Look, we've had too many of them. Mm -hmm. You remember the Roku frame pointing? Mm -hmm. They picked up some four boys from the infantry, 64 mm -hmm. infantry regiment, mm -hmm. to the extent that even the case in court, the attorney general presented the case in court that they have evidence mm -hmm. that four, uh, some top members of the Kufu administration mm -hmm. were those who recruited the boys to uh, assassinate Mr. Frimpong. You remember? Mm -hmm. Big, openly, was put in the Daily Graphic front mm -hmm. page. At the end of the day, they filed a only prosecco. So some of these things can happen, and mm -hmm. they do happen. Bizarre stories. Bizarre things are put out there, and it's done. By, we, we discussed this thing last time here, bogus informants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have that culture in this country. Okay, you are saying We're, that the police doesn't have the capacity to make that determination and dismiss whoever is mentioning of a swamp of... They sometimes... At a certain stage. They sometimes... We have this uh, suspect before the court of uh, J.B. Danquist's murder. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have heard mm. things the guy has had to say. <laughs> Some people have ruled him out as someone who is yeah. in proper, you know, condition. Well, I think that guy is mental. Yes. I mean, yes. I'm sorry, yes. but those things he's saying mm -hmm. of late. Yeah. See, when you go to jail, yeah. you are coached mm -hmm. in the prison. Mm -hmm. People coach all sorts of things. Go <laughs> muddy the case. This thing about he was sent by some people and all the rest. Uh, but you see, the interesting thing is that some of the people who are worried themselves too were pointing fingers at others previously okay. and mentioning people as <laughs> suspects. Mm -hmm. So here we are, you know. But the point I'm making is that some of these cases at this stage we are too. It's too early. We are in the preliminary stage mm. because we don't even have the specifics. Right. If Mr. Ampofu had gone, he would have been given specifics. Mm -hmm. Which particular kidnapping? which fire outbreak. Don't forget, we have also done these things before. When the fire outbreaks were happening under the Mahama administration, apart from the fact that the president himself said he suspected arson, mm -hmm. some leading members of the NDC 
actually came out and said it was the tradition of the UP to bend f uh, fire, uh, markets. Mm. And so it was them. I have the publication here. Top members of the MP mm. NDC executive said so. We politicized it. There was no evidence. The Americans came, investigated, brought their report, which is not public, but at least the president then told us that the relative to Mokola market, they found out it was electrical. Mm. And the Kumasi one was inconclusive. The issue of political <laughs> mischief makers was relegated. Mm. It could happen to this. Right. In the same vein. That's what we've been doing. Mm. So confront them. Go there. Let them give you the evidence. See, I agree. The invitation sometimes take a different form. Look, Mr. Rollins, his allegation about the Syria uh, murders of women. The police went to him, considering his office, Sacha. Mm -hmm. And it made sense. Of course, he didn't produce any results except mm -hmm. to ask for chemical interrogation. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yes. That's, that's what's the outcome. People like Dr. Bruby, Kujum Pinin, Asabi, all of them were either invited or arrested. I don't see anything wrong with that. Some were arrested while they were in church. Yes. Mm. The, the former uh, Auditor General, mm. uh, Prempe, one, Mr. Prempe, okay? Chachus was not an arrest. The people went there to try and get him. It didn't happen. The arrest didn't happen. If you like, say, attempted arrest. That's uh -huh. arrest. Yes. Well, <laughs> attempted arrest. What I mean is that they didn't take him away. Yeah, but, 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 but briefly, well, uh, Some uh, sometimes to... Yeah. Sometimes yes, to, some at the airport. Sometimes to... This, this, may be the posture, yes. this yeah. may be the posture of a lawyer. Yeah. Depending on the, the day you are being invited to come to the police, mm -hmm. depending on the time you are being invited, they can look into it and suspect that if you went there, mm -hmm. The invitation will be turned into arrest, and then you'll be detained, perhaps for a day or two yes. or more, yes. mm -hmm. under justifiable reasons. <laughs> yes. Because it's a Saturday or it's a holiday, and yes. therefore they, play they can't take too. you to court. Yes, mm -hmm. they do that. So, once you are inviting, they need to know sufficient enough mm -hmm. to be sure that if you are coming, to, if they are coming to your home, you know that they will not say. Uh, you need to be granted bail and things. That one, you are sure that they are just coming to get you to assist. Yes. But when you go there, because when you are done talking to them, they will decide either you do what we call an ordinary statement, mm -hmm. where you know that you are clean, mm -hmm. nothing is going to happen to you. Or they say you do a caution statement, statement, then you know you are in trouble. You are going to provide mm -hmm. for bail. Mm -hmm. Then you may have gone there alone. Yeah. And the time you went mm -hmm. and the day you went mm -hmm. is too late. Mm -hmm. And they say, we need A, B, C as mm. bail conditions. Yes. You can't find them yeah. within that time. Yeah, and then they, they lock you yeah, in. It's a, it's a, it's so lawyers calculate some of these things. I agree. But in this case, and I agree, it's an abuse of the process. Mm. They do it deliberately. Mm. But in this case, Mr. Ampofu was asked, you may contact so-and-so and so for information and clarification. Right. Obviously, his, his lawyers would have been yeah. those doing well, that. Well, and I'm you know? aware that there were efforts by his lawyers to reach out to this uh, number, and therefore, the clarification was being sought. Okay. That is why we should go beyond the uh, uh, press conference of Alaji Mahama Idrisu. His lawyers have formally written mm. to the yes. Director General of the CID <laughs> via the same person and gone to uh, their offices. Yes. But mm. you see, who are the suspects? What are they? You are would they only know that when you actually participate in that investigative process. Okay. The police cannot okay. interrogate Mr. Ampofu <clears throat> without pointing to the suspects or the source of their so called intelligence. All right. It is impossible. Yeah. Okay? okay. But I'm okay. saying, we'll look, we should we'll look, uh, ah. the, uh, the NDC uh, elders uh, actually recollected uh, Freddie Blaze. Uh, you know, invitation, the police <laughs> invitation to <laughs> Freddie Play and mm. things. They did so. Mm. That's true. Freddie Play declined the for me, uh, invitation formally. But he got his lawyer. In this case, incidentally, is the Deputy Attorney General. Uh, right. Right. Dami, yes. Mm. Who then has, was working with Akufuadu and Prempectin. And they wrote an explanation to the committee that was investigating the alleged diversion of party funds and copied the police with all the details in terms of what the police needed. The police didn't go back. I suspect they were satisfied with the details of the letter. The information okay. given can be Th around. This very president, this mm. president, he was invited to BNI. You remember the Rolling State mm -hmm. affair? Mm -hmm. I was invited to multimedia, mm. some okay. of your staff, and then statesman. We're all invited there, and we're kept there for hours. <laughs> 
Five, six hours, nobody had come to talk to us. It's worrying. That subculture, I think, we, we should stop. We need to that. It's, it's mm. a needless yeah. psychological, so it ties subtle into psychological touch. For right. And that should stop. The cl uh, uh, right. Criminal, right. legal, yes. right. justice. Should, that should stop. Right. Right. No? Right. Right. Yes. Right. But right. the invitation per se is not new. Take interest. Okay. Exactly. All right. And the Supreme Court has been calling for Even this. Then, exactly the the okay. And, and my assumption how sustainable is the prescription? that was advanced by the NDC elders, yeah. that none of the appointees or functionaries should cooperate. cooperate going forward. That same thing was said in 2001, 21st September 2001, 25th September, same. In fact, the wording appears the same, okay. as if they went and picked it from right. that statement. Mm -hmm. But what, it didn't stop the investigative agencies from continuing mm -hmm. with their investigations. Right. So the functionaries ended up appearing mm. before them, statesmen picking, processed, dockers belt, some went to court, some got se convicted, sentenced, uh, convicted and sentenced, others were discharged and acquitted. Okay. The process, the due process cannot stop. All right. Thank you very much. And so uh, we understood, like uh, Martin was saying earlier, we understood that the police uh, CID had gotten in touch with uh, Opusuan Pofo directly and they made a request to him to meet them at a place of his own choosing. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that place, um, uh, they had agreed to meet at a, a particular place, uh, his lawyer's offices, mm -hmm. and they were supposed to meet um, yesterday, Friday. I don't know if it happened. And that at that meeting, they have accepted that uh, one elder of the uh, NDC would be part of the team that will meet. I, 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 I am, it was information, information from yeah, from a source from a source from a source within <laughs> let him validate within that us. is that is possible uh, of being Aruna, no. validate it. Uh, so <laughs> we didn't meet yesterday. <laughs> we're cool, we're cool, just to we didn't meet yesterday. That mm. We will respect due process. Okay. Thank you. Thank All right. We'll take a break. To <laughs> Thank you. Atiwa. Mm. She should Tiwa. Tiwa. To mm. Madam Tiwa, mm. she should behave professionally mm. and know that the exercise of any mandate under the constitution, I'm sure in Article 2. What is unprofessional about writing a letter to I invite say you? She should is that not actually a case to him because yes, he's ruling a... political class will not rule forever. Okay. She should be wary of we'll the mandate break here. that we'll be right she cannot back. exercise her <laughs> mandate capriciously <laughs> and whimsically forever. <laughs> <laughs>